You and I just get one story. We just get one story. This life, these choices, this inner world, these thoughts, these people, this place, these memories, this is my story. And I just get one story. My story has a lot of chapters and a lot of layers, but it's my story. It's your story, too. It's the one you're living in right now. It's probably not a fairy tale. A lot of people not committing on that. (laughs) There's no doubt that every single one of our stories has challenges and failures and disappointments and hardships. But it's our story. It's the only one we get. How are you writing your one story? Are you proactively writing your story or does it seem that someone else is writing it and you're just listening in? That you are more a victim of the life before you. Some of us are disconnected from our stories because we are so disappointed in them. We got hurt. Or we hurt someone else. Or we failed. Or things got ugly. Or we figured out that we were not as strong as we thought we were. We try to drop whole chapters of our life because they are detours from what we see as the main plot. But for all we know, the detours are the heart of the story. Amen. Thank you. I'm going to say it one more time. We try to excise entire chapters of our story because we believe they are detours from the main plot. But how do we know that the detours are not the heart of the story? What we are promised is that in all things, God works for our good. We are promised that God takes every detail of our story and he weaves them into a story of redemption. That he takes our failures and our weaknesses and our ugliest moments and he usually uses those to teach us our deepest truths. Amen. Amen. And then we try to excise them from our story, even though he has redeemed them. He doesn't waste any of our story. Not a single aching truth does he waste. He embraces our stories in their entirety. He invites us to embrace our story as well. It's the only story you get. It's the only story I get. I can't tell, I can't let the whole of my story drift because there are chapters that I don't like. I can't become distracted and drift just because I can't see how the plot is going to turn out to my advantage. I have to embrace my story. This life, these choices, this inner world, these thoughts, these people, this place, these memories. God has embraced me. Why am I so hesitant to embrace my own story? Why? Why don't I stop waiting for life to get good so I can start living? Why don't I embrace the life that I have and squeeze out every bit of joy and surrender everything to the God who promises to lead me? Why don't I embrace my life and anchor it appropriately in Jesus and pay attention and tie this ship safely into Christ and his kingdom and stop drifting? This is my story. Together, this is our story. 